Hey there my fellow intellectuals, Dr. Kyle here with another video and today what I want to do is talk to you about the journey that I took to go from my physics PhD to my current role as a data scientist at the NASA Ames Research Center where I work for the Bay Area Environmental Research Institute. Now this was a long process and I hope that this video can be a resource or a guide to those of you who may be in a similar situation where you may have been in academia for 10 or more years like I was and you want to get your first outside of university job. Now, I will say that a couple of factors led to me applying to the job that I ultimately got. One of them was that I wanted to move back home to be closer to my family. So I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. So all of the jobs I had applied to were in Northern California in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I wanted to go into data science because I had heard so much about how data science was a booming field and that a lot of physics PhDs go from their physics PhD to becoming a data scientist because there's a lot of overlap in terms of the skills that you develop. And when I had read the job descriptions and heard data scientists talk about what they do, I thought, yeah, that sounds like a lot like what I did for my PhD. So I think that would be a good career choice for me. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, look at the spreadsheet that I made for my job search. I actually made two. So uh, this one was made back in March and this is just where I kept track of the company, the job posting that I saw, um, company contacts, which I just removed here for privacy purposes for the video and just follow-up dates of when I last talked to my contact and if I had planned another one. And so this was just a way for me to keep track of everything that I had applied to, though truthfully I did not do a good job of this because I made two spreadsheets and this is not even fully complete because I know for a fact I applied to more than just 60, 61 jobs. But this is just to give you an idea of just all the kinds of jobs I was looking for, the companies I was applying to, and my sort of organizational project that I created for myself when looking for a job. I did try um, to use these automated tools like Teal and Sonara, like subscribing to them and trying to just have an auto job search, uh, putting in applications because it was draining. I mean, writing cover letters and adapting your resume to the specific job was very time consuming. Like I would literally modify my resume and my cover letters, well, of course the cover letters, but the resume for each position. I didn't just submit a very generic resume. I, I used different tailored resumes to each position and it was time consuming to do that. So I thought, why not just, you know, use AI tools to help out with that. These tools did not help me get the job. I will say that much. So I cannot really endorse these um, personally, but just letting you know that they are out there to use. I will say what ultimately got me my job was networking. And what do I mean by that? Well, I was at home one day and this is a really funny story. My dad had been just sending me job application, job application, job application, not even like a week after I got my PhD. I had just graduated. We had the whole ceremony. Family came out to celebrate with me. And not even a week, my dad's already sending me jobs. It's just like, gosh, I can't even get a week to, to relax. But I have to thank my dad for doing that because I ran across a job description that looked a lot like this. This is not the exact job posting that I saw, but it's very, very close to the position that I ended up getting. And I saw that it was posted by the Bay Area Environmental Research Institute. Now, for those of you who may not know, the Bay Area Environmental Research Institute hosted the internship that I was a part of in college. So I was part of this internship known as SARP, the Student Airborne Research Program. I did it in the summer of 2016. It was just an amazing experience. Got to fly on NASA's DC-8, which was just recently decommissioned. Um, very sad about that. But I will say that the NASA SARP internship was one of the most defining moments of my young scientist life. And the opportunity to work for the Bay Area Environmental Research Institute, or Barry, was uh, exciting, definitely exciting. So when I saw this job, when I saw the posting that looked very much like this, I got really excited. So what did I do? I had heard so much about networking, just how 
networking is a valuable skill and an asset to when you want to secure a job. And I have to say that was 100% the truth. What did I do? Well, I reached out to my old internship program manager who I was on good terms with. So I did the internship in 2016 and I had run into uh, the program manager um, multiple times since then. She's, she's awesome. So thank you, Emily. You're awesome if you're watching this video. And um, I was like, okay, you know what? At this point, I think this was maybe early July or, or late June. And I had already applied, as you could see, to these jobs. I had already applied to, you know, 60 or whatever, however many jobs I had already applied to. And nothing was sticking, right? Nothing was sticking. I was not getting any callbacks. I was not getting any emails. I was not getting an opportunity to interview or talk to anyone. So I was pretty desperate at this point. I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I, I have to network. There's just no other way I can possibly just talk to somebody. So I reached out to Emily, my, my former program manager at NASA SARP. And I just said, hey, you know, I see this position at Barry. I know you used to work for Barry. Emily has since left. Do you know who would be hiring for this role? Or if, could, you, could you put me in contact to somebody who uh, is in a decision-making role for this position. She said, oh, I don't know who would be hiring for this position, but I can put you into contact with you know, someone I know at Barry who, who might know. And so one thing led to another. She emailed this person, she attached my resume, and this person was like, oh, okay, you know, I do know so-and-so is hiring for this position. Let me pass Kyle's resume to that person. That person was like, I already filled this position, but my colleague, is trying to hire for the exact same position. Let me pass Kyle's resume to that person. So networking works, okay? You you just gotta try it. I cannot emphasize that enough. And it feels, you know, strange the first time you do it. It feels like unnatural, at least it did to me. I was really uncomfortable doing it. I was just felt like, you know, why can't I just apply for the job, hit the apply now button and just be done with it. But in all honesty, Organizations, companies, they rather get a personally recommended applicant, right? They want someone who they can trust, someone that someone on the inside is saying, yeah, this person would be a really great fit, right? So that is basically how I got the chance to talk over a Zoom call to the person who was hiring for this role. And so we had a very good call. My background for the position, if you read the job duties, this is actually a really great um, example, because even though this is not the exact posting, it's very, very similar. You can see here the qualifications that they had here. So I, I didn't really have the remote sensing or environmental science, but I did a lot of image processing um, in grad school for astronomy. Um, I did a lot of programming in Python. I, I also know MATLAB and R. Um, didn't really have much experience with deep learning at the time, but I also knew I had strong communication. And I thought that, you know, this, this, this could work. I can make this work, right? Um, and I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to learn about these things, learn about machine learning, learn about data science, learn about, learn about you know, high-performance computing. And so all of these things led me to want to take some additional coursework to augment my current skills. So what did I do? I went to Coursera. And I completed a number of different courses on Coursera. So the two courses that I would most recommend for anyone who wants to get into data science would be the Machine Learning Specialization by Andrew Ng from Stanford University. This course was fantastic. I just, I learned so much about machine learning. It was a really great foundational base to build off of and develop uh, an intuitive understanding of how these machine learning algorithms work. The second one I would recommend is the IBM Data Science certificate course. This one was uh, definitely um, much longer than the machine learning one, but it was it encapsulated such a broad scope of what data science looks like, taught me a lot about things like SQL and databases, which I had never really thought about before, and uh, also went through machine learning as well. So I really got my machine learning 101 fundamentals out of the way with these two courses. I also took a lot of other courses as well, as you can see, um, on my page here, but this was also specifically to um, augment and and improve my knowledge in the areas I was pretty weak in. So when I looked at the qualifications and the preferred qualifications, 
I was thinking to myself, well, I don't know much about machine learning. I don't really know much about uh, advanced um, high performance computing, right? So that's why I ended up taking a course on high performance computing, right? So there's a, there's a course here, where is it? Yeah, Introduction to High Performance and Parallel Computing. Um, I thought that course was really good too. It just gave me a good understanding of how to actually operate a high performance you know, supercomputing system. And I you know, also was not very knowledgeable about what remote sensing was. I learned from the person I was talking to that remote sensing was a big part of the job. So I was like, what, what is that? So I ended up taking a uh, course in remote sensing as well. Now, these courses usually take months, as they say. But honestly, it's at your own pace. And if you haven't figured out already, I like to learn. So I was just using that whole summer after my PhD was done because I had no other responsibilities other than to get a job to just take these courses and learn the skills I needed for the job. And I have to say, taking those courses on Coursera, I cannot emphasize enough how important that was because I do a lot of high performance computing day to day now. I do machine learning a lot day to day now. So learning things like PyTorch, Keras, and TensorFlow was super important. And uh, those courses were uh, a great fundamental base to build off of. I'd also recommend a couple of books if you want to get into data science and machine learning. For the machine learning part, this one, Hands-On Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn, Keras, and TensorFlow is phenomenal. I think it's a great resource. Uh, pretty much has everything you need to know um, that goes up to like 2022 or 23. Um, all the state-of-the-art technologies and references are in here, um, but also just gives you actual code to to write and and um, you know, do examples from, so you can really um, you know get that hands-on experience. Cannot recommend this book enough. Um, the second book I'd also recommend is Ace the Data Science Interview by Kevin Ho and uh, Nick Singh. Um, this was a really good book just to show me where I was kind of weak in in terms of okay, you know, I do know a lot of math, I do no programming, but what specifically do I also need to know for like a data science heavy role? I think it is a great resource to sort of gauge where you're at with your data science skill and see if you need to work on anything specific. So with that being said, I think that ultimately what got me this job was networking, right? Networking to my old program manager at Barry was just, it was pivotal for me to getting this role and I cannot emphasize the importance of networking enough. You're probably gonna get sick of me saying that in this video by now. But I think in addition to that, taking the initiative to just take all these additional courses on Coursera, just seeing where I um, was not you know, proficient in and trying to improve on those areas uh, was also super important. Now for the overall job interview, uh, I interviewed in August of last year and I can't really talk too much about the interview process in terms of what I was asked, but I will say that being honest with like, hey, I, I know I don't have the traditional background of you know, a remote sensing degree and, and experience with these softwares, but I'm willing to learn. I've taken the time to take all these additional coursework and, and you know, be ready for this role. And I think that came through in the interview. And I think that's why I was ultimately given a chance to try and prove myself in this role. And so far, eight months later, it seems to have worked out. So um, with that, I think that kind of covers what happened to me in the past year in terms of the job hunting process. It was not clean, it was not smooth, it was not enjoyable, but I went through it. And I, I really feel for those of you who are also in a similar position, um, I, I, I cannot um, thank Emily, my uh, program manager at SARP enough for, for giving me the opportunity or just you know taking the chance to send my resume off to her uh, former employer and um, just keep trying, that's all I can say. Just keep trying. You know, I, I made a lot of mistakes in this process. Again, I'm just gonna say it again, well, one last time, I promise, but networking. Finding someone who is in a position that can put you into contact into an organization that you really wanna work for is just vital, I think, in the job hunt these days. And that's just coming from experience. So. Okay, I think I've rambled long enough about networking and its value, and uh, I, I hope that gave you some ideas to what I went through during my job search about a year ago, and 
I really hope that this is going to be useful for those of you who may be going through your own job hunt. And with that, I'll conclude the video and I just hope you all have a wonderful day.